Hello students and welcome to our video notes titled Factoring Trinomials of the Form AX Squared Plus BX Plus C when the A does not equal 1. So let me highlight over top of this. So we've already studied factoring trinomials in this form when A did equal 1. So today, if you take a look at the examples we're going to be factoring, we have a 7x squared. So it's no longer going to be a 1x squared. Here we have a 5x squared, a 6x squared, and a 10x squared. So none of the a's, the constants in front of the x squared term, none of them are 1. Um, if you look at the rest of your polynomial, here's your bx and your c, your bx and your c, bx and c, and bx and c. So everything is sort of following suit here with this stipulation. Now, this isn't really much different than the way we factored trinomials before. It's just maybe this much more challenging because it's not a one here in front. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. Um, the first way is really just the way I prefer, which is just thinking about the fact that factoring means to express a polynomial as the product of other polynomials and to sort of unwrap multiplication and figure out what we would put in these four positions so that when I multiply these polynomials together, I get this. And now my phone's ringing and I can't see who it is. Well, that is not a number I know. So I am just going to let that go to voicemail. Plus, I really don't want to talk during my video. So sorry for the interruption. Okay, so I need to find two terms that when I multiply them together, I get 7x squared. Now the good news is 7 is a prime number. So there aren't many choices for a 7. So since 7 can only be expressed as 7 times 1, I'm going to go ahead and put a 7x here and a 1x here because 7x times 1x is going to give me 7x squared. I also know that on my last multiplication here, these two terms multiplied together have to give me this back term 2. And that's nice because 2 is also prime, so I know it has to be 2 and 1. But where do I position them? Well, I have to keep in mind that when I combine my like terms, which will be found by this product added to this product, I have to know that I'm going to end up with a 9x. So I have to strategically place the 2 and the 1 uh, so that that will happen. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 2 here and the 1 here. So you can see that here's my 7x squared. Here is my 7x, if I make that positive. Here is my 2x, if I make this one positive. And then finally, here is my 2. And there it is. There's my 9x. So 7x squared plus 9x plus 2 is what I started with. That's how I know I did this correctly. So my final answer, I'm going to write it without all these markings, would just be 7x plus 2 times x plus 1. This is the factored version of this polynomial. Now, when I say I was going to do it a second way, I'm not really doing it a second way, but I guess I could call this um, a strategy if you want to use it. So let me flip this over. Um, let me rewrite that same problem. 7x squared plus 9x plus 2. If this strategy I'm going to show you helps you 
to sort of organize your work, then by all means use it. Okay, so you sort of leave, you leave the trinomial as it stands. And so underneath this seven X squared, you're gonna write two terms that multiply to give you seven X squared. So that would be seven X and X. And then underneath the two, you're gonna write two terms or two numbers that multiply to give you two. So maybe one and two. Now, we're gonna multiply these together. Seven X times one is seven X. X times two is two X. And if you look straight up, two X added to seven X does give me that nine X. So we sort of found the magic. Now here's the deal. When you put your parentheses down, the first slots here in each parentheses get filled with these two. So seven X with X, because you've got to make that seven X squared. Here's the cool part though. The seven X has to get multiplied out here by this one. See, these have to hook up to make seven X. So I'm going to set the one there. And then this X, has to get multiplied by this two to make the two X. So the two has to go there. And then since everything was positive, there's my answer. So if that helps in any way, feel free to use it. Okay, let's go to the second example. Five X squared minus eight X minus four. Okay, I'm gonna use that strategy the first time around on this one, but don't feel like you have to. Okay, so I need two terms that multiply to give me five X squared. Again, five is prime, so this is pretty simple. It's gonna have to be five X and one X. Now, I need two numbers that multiply to give me a negative four. Well, I'm thinking two and two, okay? Because two times two is positive four. Now, I'm gonna have to tweak signs here, and in order to do that, let me kind of look here. So two times five X is 10 X, and two times X is two X, and these have to add to negative eight X. So which one has to be negative? Well, I'm thinking the 10 X should be the negative. Negative 10 X plus two X will give me that negative eight X. So I'm gonna put the negative with this guy. And now you can see two times negative two is negative four. 2x plus negative 10x is negative 8x, and x times 5x is 5x squared. So we have it. So when we go to write the answer, the first slots are occupied by the 5x and the x. Now, there's your 5x squared. The 5x has to get multiplied by the negative 2 to make this guy. So I'm going to put the negative 2 here. The X has to get multiplied to the positive two, positive two. And that's all she wrote. If you check it, you can see five X squared minus 10 X plus two X minus four. There's your combo. That's this part. Final answer, five X squared minus eight X minus four. That's what you started with. But the true answer to this problem is right here, the factored version, since that's what they told us to do was factor. Cool, let's go to that. We only have two to go. Let's go to the next one. 6x squared plus 17x plus 12. Okay, I'm going to run this the same way. The only difference is I'm going to change over to a pencil. And I recommend you do this as well for the simple fact that if you look at this 6 and this 12, 6 and 12 are not prime numbers. So there is a chance that when I get into this, I'll pick the wrong factors on the first time around, and then I can just erase and try other factors. Sometimes I get lucky, and the first time I do it, it works out. You just got to try stuff. So let's look at a 6x squared. I need two terms that multiply to 6x squared. So you got to think of your factors of 6, Right off the bat, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking three and two. So if I take a three X times a two X, that's gonna make six X squared. 
Now 12, I've got some options. Let's see, I've got 12 times one, four times three, six times two. Um, I don't know what I wanna go for. Let me go with a six and a two, just to see. So if I choose a six and a two, then six times three X is 18 X and two times two X is four X. And then I gotta look at this addition here. Can a four X and an 18 X, no matter what signs I put on them, can they ever add to a 17 X? I don't think so. So I don't think this is it. So this is why I use pencil, I'm gonna erase. All right, well, let me try something different. Let me try four and three. All right, four times three X is 12 X and three times two X is six X, whoops, six X. Can a 12 X and a six X add to a 17 X? It can make an 18 X, but no matter what signs I put on them, I don't see this adding up to a positive 17. So this isn't it. Oh boy. Oh wait, something just struck me here. What if I switch these two? What if I put the three here? Let me make the three on top and the four on the bottom. Let me do a three and a four. Okay, three times three X is nine X. Four times two X is eight X. Eight X plus nine X is 17 X. Ta-da, we found the magic. So how do we write the answer? Well, the way we always do, we put our two parentheses the first slots here are occupied by these guys, so 3x and 2x, because there is the, boom, 6x squared. Now, who does the 3x have to get multiplied by? The 3x had to get multiplied by the 3, so that we got 9x. So the, three, the positive 3 has to go back here. The 2x had to get multiplied by the 4, the positive 4, so we'll put him there. And then hopefully this all works out. So I'm gonna go with this as my answer. My check, here I go. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 3, 9x. 4 times 2x, 8x. 4 times 3, 12. Combine my like terms. 6x squared, here it is, 17x and 12, ta-da! So this is my answer here, 3x plus 4, times 2x plus 3. And we've made it to the last example. At any time, you know, feel free to pause this and try it, and then you can see me do it and see if we got the same answer. Okay. 10x squared plus 19x plus 6. Again, 10 and 6 are not prime numbers, so I'm using a pencil because you saw I messed up twice up above. All right, two terms that multiply to 10x squared. I'm going to go with 5x and 2x. If, if you start doing things, like you know how I messed up up here a couple of times, don't feel that your, maybe your error is in the front because you know I can do five and two, but I could also do 10X and X. So sometimes you have to tweak the front. But I'm gonna go with my gut and do a five X and a two X. Okay, a six, uh, let's try a three and a two. All right, three times five X, 15 X. 2 times 2x, 4x. Oh my goodness, I got it on the first try. 4x plus 15x is 19x. That was lucky. Okay, so answer to this problem. Set your two parentheses down. 5x in the first slot, 2x over here in the other first position. Okay, 5x has to be multiplied by the 3. So we'll put the positive 3 back here. The 2x has to get multiplied by the 2. So we'll put that in there. And now we'll check it. Here's my check. 5x times 2x, 10x squared. 5x times 3, 15x. 2 times 2x, 4x. And 2 times 3 is 6. So, final answer, 10x squared plus 19x plus six. Okay, so hopefully this is sinking in. We're gonna have some practice on this. Thanks for watching.